I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about JavaScript design patterns, full screen CSS windows, JavaScript charts, and more. Let's check it out. So first up, we have this amazing website by someone named Sher Chuan about JavaScript design patterns. Now, this is an absolutely wonderful guide that goes through different ways of um, programming in JavaScript. Now, we're talking about patterns from JavaScript variable hoisting, all sorts of jQuery patterns using pub, sub, and more. Uh, so let's check out the site. We'll just go through some of the patterns that they have here. Goes through really everything that you're going to need to become a pretty competent JavaScript programmer. Uh, goes through different patterns for function declarations, conditionals, for loops, global variables, um, built-in prototypes, and whether or not to augment them, and just an absolute ton of stuff. Now, the really nice thing about this site is that all of these different patterns are available on GitHub. So you can see all of the source code for them, you can fork them, add to it, and more. Uh, and then also, if you want to, you can follow Shirchuan on GitHub to receive new pattern updates. So really uh, a great resource. Check that out. It's a great refresher if you already know how to program in JavaScript. Or if you've got a friend who's new to JavaScript, send them over to this page. Pretty cool stuff. Well, next up, over on the Crocodoc blog, we have this really cool article called 3 Dfying Documents Using CSS Transforms. Whoa, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. Crocodoc is basically a tool that allows you to, or well, I should say a company or a product that allows you to convert your documents into nice HTML5 embeddable documents. It's, it's actually a really cool product. But uh, basically, they have created this 3D demo that allows you to 3Dify Whoa. your documents. And right now on their uh, on their homepage, they're using this as a way to basically demonstrate how their process works. A first look at the new Crocodoc, right? And you can drag to rotate this, and it basically shows you, you know, the different layers that they use to construct your HTML5 documents. Now, this is interesting because of cross-browser support. Uh, they got this to work pretty well in quote-unquote modern browsers, and you can you know, toggle whether or not this is an expanded view. You can do a random transition here, and you can kind of drag around, and that's pretty cool. But if we scroll down a little bit further here, they basically had to create a 2D simulation of the 3D mode so that it would work in Internet Explorer 9. So let's see if we can go ahead and look at that demo. If I go ahead and drag around here, you can see that it looks very similar, but this is actually working in two totally separate ways. On the right side, they're using CSS3, and on the left side, they're actually using JavaScript to simulate the same thing. Now, if I drag these in such a way that you can kind of see the space between each document, if you look at the right side, you can see that there is a larger amount of space right here versus towards the beginning. And over in the 2D simulation, it's actually all the same. So you're seeing sort of a, a flattened view of the same perspective. But very clever stuff. We don't have time to go into all of the nuts and bolts of exactly how this works. But definitely check out the blog post because it's it's pretty amazing what they did here. That, that is pretty amazing. It's kind of weird how they had to do twice the work to make it work in Internet Explorer 9. But they uh, they did it anyway. Yeah. Hmm. Crocodoc. Crocodoc. I thought that was a shoe company. Nope. Not in this case. Next up, we have a jQuery plugin called Windows. Now, this is interesting. This is, quote, a handy, loosely coupled jQuery plugin for full screen scrolling windows. And we should say that this has nothing to do with Windows, the Microsoft operating system. Right. Trademark symbol, if you're listening, Microsoft's right. lawyers. Yep. Uh, no, so this is actually pretty cool. You'll see um, the full screen scrolling window effect becoming a more popular design pattern. Now, here's the website for it. Watch closely. I scroll and the whole thing scrolls with me. Wow. So, yeah, 
<laughs> so this is um, actually what it would look like if you bootstrap the project with this jQuery.windows plugin. You can see there's not a lot of files that it uses. It uses one CSS file, one JavaScript file, and the CSS is actually SAS based, so that makes it a lot easier to extend and all, all that stuff. So what this is is pretty much an API for window management, and it's very, very easy to use. Uh, it just gives you, you, you know, you give it a jQuery selector, tell it whether or not you want to snap on scroll and snap to the different window. You get functions for scrolling, snapping, completing, and entering the window. Uh, anyway, there's also a great JavaScript API for using it. Extremely easy to use. Uh, just throw it in your project, and boom, you got scrolling windows. Pretty cool stuff. Well, next up is CSS CSS. That's right. There, there's not an echo in here. The tool is called CSS CSS. Basically, it's a redundancy analyzer for your CSS or SAS, meaning it looks for duplicated code or duplicated declarations to make sure that you're not repeating yourself and just basically cluttering up your code. Does it make sure that you're not repeating yourself? Uh, I'm not sure if it makes sure that you're not repeating yourself. Hmm. We should, we should see if it makes sure that you're not repeating yourself. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at that right now. Uh, so CSS, CSS will parse any CSS files you give it and will let you know which rule sets have been duplicated. And basically, this is a good strategy to try to reduce file size, make sure that your CSS is maintainable, and so on. It just makes things a lot cleaner. You can install this as a packaged Ruby gem, and then you just point it to the path for your CSS documents, and you can do the same thing for your SAS documents. And it will go ahead and analyze your code and tell you where you've duplicated declarations and duplicated your code. So really quick and easy way to just uh, make sure that you're not repeating yourself. That's good. That's something we support over here at Treehouse Treehouse. Next up, we have something called the Masked Input plugin. Now, this is a, a really great plugin that when you've got a text field or something like that, you give it a mask. Now, what the mask will do will give you different formatting. So, let's say you have a date field and you want two characters, a slash, two more characters, and then, you know, four characters for the month, day, and year. Right. This plugin lets you do that. So, they've got a nice demo on the site here. So, as an example, uh, click in this date box right here, and boom, you've got these mass characters right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this works for phone numbers, tax IDs, pretty much anything you want. You can define the mask function very, very easily right inside a jQuery declaration. Just pass it the mask function and then a string. So there's a few options that it supports, but this is uh, a pretty great plugin. This is going to be something that's really useful maybe on an e-commerce site where you want people to input their credit card numbers, something like that. You know, it's one alternative that we can use for um, hints that we have in form fields. Oh, okay. So pretty good plugin. Check that out. Nice. So next up is polychart.js, and polychart is free to use if you're just using it, you know, for day-to-day -day projects, but if you're actually using it for something commercial, you do need to pay for a license. But that said, it is pretty cool. So let's take a nice. look at it. Uh, it says on the site, the most flexible interactive charts on the browser, and I would have to agree that I've seen a lot of charting libraries, and uh, this is one of the best. So here we have three separate graphs, and over on the left side, I can actually click one of these bar charts, and it will go ahead and animate the, the next chart over. So if that weren't cool enough, I can actually hover over these and see additional pieces of information about each data point, and then I can click on those and the chart, the next chart over will actually animate as well, and I can see additional information. So it's a really quick way to create nice interactive charts and allow you to drill down into uh, additional pieces of information to kind of add more clarity to the data. So if we scroll down, uh, we can, you see that we can use JSON, uh, CSV, AJAX, um, and 
It's just really, really robust. So let's go ahead and jump over to the, the demo here. You can see that there's a bunch of different charts that we can go ahead and use. And just below each one of those, you can see the code that you would want to use in order to implement that. So they have all sorts of fun data here, Lord of the Rings, box office gross, uh, histogram of different heights, uh, a sales funnel, all sorts of things that are, you know. Common charts. Common charts, favorite pets. So things that are useful, possibly not so useful, but uh, you know, really great charting library and definitely worth checking out. Why would you point to me when you said possibly not so useful? I don't know, Jason. It's just totally co coincidental. <laughs> Nothing to do with you. So next up, we have the best named plugin that I've ever seen. It's called J Cipher. Hmm. This is not my Twitter handle. This is uh, this stands for jQuery Text Ciphering. And by ciphering, again, we don't mean my last name. Um, so this is pretty cool. Watch the uh, the demo right here where it says text to cipher. Again, when I say cipher, I mean encrypt, not not my last name. Anyway, click restart, and you can see, whoa, just like in a movie, it goes through a bunch of different text, and then, boom, the text is unencrypted. Um, this is, I, I'm not exactly sure where you would legitimately use it, but I'm sure you could find a, a great opportunity. Uh, it, it, again, this is one of the best named plugins ever. Um, no, but let's say you are making you know, a great website where it has a splash page or something and you want it to come in and be ciphered in a bunch of different ways. Well, you can use this plugin. Easy to use, e easy to implement. This is definitely something that's a little bit more flashier and less practical, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you use it in the right context. So you know, as long as you're just trying to create a feel or a mood for like a movie or a video game or something right. like that, then yeah, go ahead and go for it. I, I think it's actually pretty cool. Could also be good for prices on a menu, mm. like a restaurant menu. Yeah, possibly. Just an idea, just throwing that out there. That's, that, that one's for free from, from Jay Cypher. Yeah. Yep. So next up is this amazing uh, dashboard framework called dashing. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can go ahead and view the source on GitHub, but that's boring. Let's just go <laughs> ahead and look at a demo. <laughs> so here's what dashing looks like. You can create these amazing animated charts. So similar to polychart, but a little bit different in function. Um, and then I can actually drag these around and rearrange them. So whoa, look at that. Wow. I can actually you know, creates like a, a different looking dashboard here. Smashing. So here, you know, you have uh, the amount of synergy the company has generated, buzzwords, uh, current valuation, convergence, you know, all, all the things that you would want out of a company dashboard. But uh, if we go ahead and go back to dashing here, basically it's a Sinatra based framework. You can go ahead and create your own widgets or you can use the pre-made ones and they're all built in SAS, HTML, and CoffeeScript. So pretty amazing. I mean, you know, this is actually something that is much needed, I think, in a lot of companies. They just want to know some quick metrics that, you know, everybody can look at. And they even have um, a version that's optimized for 1080p screens. Mm. So it's definitely intended to be put onto like a monitor around the office so everybody can just see, uh, you know, uh, synergy and bu buzzwords and, uh, and, and things like that. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of synergy going on here. That's right. Uh, no, but it's actually pretty cool because you can get data into these widgets pretty easily. You get a little token and then, you know, right from the command line, you can post data to update these widgets every so often. Yep, very cool stuff. So uh, I think that's about all we got today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at J Cypher, not the plugin. Uh, if you like this podcast, please rate us in iTunes. You can search for us under Treehouse Show. You can also see us on YouTube at youtube.com slash go treehouse. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about Android, iOS, business, web design, web development, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.